Glory to God. Glory to God forevermore. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 1, verse 17. Okay. Ephesians 1 16 says, Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of His calling and what the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. We have given thanks that He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Our responsibility is to explore those spiritual blessings. Amen. So, in the teaching of God's word, we explore the spiritual blessings that God has blessed us with. So we are praying this morning, you know, that as we receive God's word in the course of the teaching today, that um, we receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus. That the eyes of our understanding is enlightened, that every body of ignorance is lifted from our shoulders, that we receive the light of God in the meeting today. Can we pray? In the name of Jesus. Oh, we receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Oh, we receive our eyes open, our lives enlightened. We receive the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus flood our hearts. Oh, vegadina mambra gadigo, seki vela gadina mandos, eki go de kida barate gina mangos, ikla krate gadina mandos is a man. Oh, seki verina manda kila krate gazuzo. Oh, we see ignorance taken away. Veki barra gadina mangro, kida vela gadona mandos. We see questions answered. We see the might of God in the meeting. We see the power of God walk through us. Oh, the light of Jesus flows our hearts. Oh, Holy Brakid of the Mandos, and give up a Barafa Gatuko Kurumandos in the Velagado, a Krata Kita Barava Nemando, Shaka Baranda Kabarava Galados, a Barfa Venemandos, oh, Sekepale Mondos, Supra Gatina Mandos, a Kibana Mandos, oh, Savenemandos. Today we know Sekratile Barana Mandos, Gadena Mandos, we have listening ears, Vrika Baragadina Mandos, Suka Baranagada. We have hearts that are open. Our eyes are seen. Our eyes are seen. We are not the blind today. We are the ones that see. Oh, we see the light of Jesus. 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 Oh, we see the light of Jesus
spirit of wisdom and revelation baba gatina mandata in the knowledge of Christ today beki sopra e ki vela mo go kusa sopra da mo kusa sopra e ka baka kilo barata kada our eyes are open vi ka bare de mondos e ki lato e ki rata should be revealed in the name of the son e li prate de mondos sopra there is no darkness there is no ignorance veki pra e ki livra na mondos e pri ki vela ka kusa sopra da mo kusa sopra e sopra veki prute ka bala gatina mo kusa sopra e ki sopra na no obscurity for us if lacry them on the system we receive direction faki kurana mam da sasaba in the gospel faki di manam braga tetana if lacrati na mam da sasaba today we discover the peace of god viki ne mam grati da eli frada mam da sasaba in the gospel of jesus aki baraga di na mam da sasaba today we discover the power of god aki li braga di na mam da sasaba like never before kraki gugu ti ve na mam da aki prati na mam ga singa bere ve de gada i fara mam da sasaba i flakri Pani kago kusa zebra ali okina makrudina ramtosa we do not live here the same paki kusa zebra kade kade eka leka suma kade because the revelation of Jesus eats us today veki suba haki dana bonda sada ile brakadina bonda sada our lives our ministries are changed forever veki suba eki dana mam braki godi barata kade only brada na mam sada by the power of the gospel e veki go para galina mam do sugra kade ki super kinda bakuda vegando do gosto super e pa velin croti che bella su sebe o si che bella manda e shopaka ki go vera cadena manda super e li cratica pago se e vanda manda super e ko vegeta sa the peace of god like never before e vrana manda is a rabbit ross e ki barone ki gale boroku go sina manda e le praki dana manda su super revelation mole that takes away every fear e ka pa ku ku su su fa it's us today veki na mam bragata ti na bragata revelation knowledge that takes away anxiety vi ka la ka to su su fa na mam do su su revelation knowledge that takes away every form of fear e bi ko ba fi ke regati la ba ko oh we receive e ki lo pa ka su na mam da the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ e kro ke ba ka ka su pa pa bro ka ti na Kilo Barandas, a keeper of Nandas, a keeper of Nandas, a keeper of Nandas, a keeper of Nandas, a clean broca digo barata cadina mongos, a broki go severani mobra, a lico sabababara cadusum, O sabababara cadina mongos, O seven amongos, a clean braha cadugos, a clean braha the gogos. Amen. Amen. We are still praying. Ephesians six. Ephesians 6 verse 18 Pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me that all trust may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel and for me that all trust may be given unto me verse 19 that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel so we are praying for pastor joseph that you know as he preaches the word today um that utterance is given unto him utterance is given unto him so that he is able to open his mouth you know and make known unto us the mystery of the gospel we pray that you know there is precision and accuracy you know as he preaches that there is great utterance there is great revelation knowledge in the things that he will be saying to us can we begin to pray veke baraga dina mongro tika vela gadisu sabra eki koko dina mongro katele vene mongos beki sufre eki lago do de mongos sabra oh seven mongos Utterance, mighty utterance today. Veki baba baka kusu prake dela mongos. Mighty, 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 mighty utterance. Kli prake to kusu ve 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 laki kira na mongos. E blikro se fregado nomba grado kula ver nomba kusu. 
Oh, otras. Apakina berate kelina manus. As your mouth is about to speak. Viki mera gatina man grudina vela gadas sabra. Oh, he makes known the mission of the gospel. Without boldness, without courage. Vika para gatina manus sabra. With precision and accuracy. Vaki fire and manus sabra. With conviction in his heart. Vaki pra gatina man pra gatina man pra gatos sabra. Eli fa ak gatos sabra na manus sabra. Oh, that the words that will come out of his house. We come from with power of God. Vagriga da manda sabra. We will bring peace to the hearts of men. Vika pa gagasu de virana manda sabra. We cause liberation. Kafe gatina man pra gatina sabra. We take away ignorance. Kafe go para galatus. Eki vina man pra gatos sabra. Bring joy and comfort. Kafe galagrana manda and edification to all men. Vika pa gatum sabra. Eli kroti ke pele corona manda shidaba. Eki no faraka gosu sabra na manda. Eke kidos. Eke kidos. Eke kidos. Eke kidos. Eke kidos. Like la progodina mandos, i vakito brande mandos, bagos veke dogo groti ke la brande mandos vre, o shi ke braki gudo ke brande mandos, e black rupi ne mana mandos, o sa vera ke de brande ke la godos, o si va trans, o trans, o trans this morning, i vera ke dina brande ke dina mandos vre, o la gredina brande mandos, o trans vera saben, vaki ke brande ne mandos, i ke bag gusus vre. Oh, Rika Barra, mighty Otras, Kevin Abrata, Kikina Mamas, O Sagabadis, O Sagabadis, O Sagabadis, O Sagabadis, Vegru de Barata, Kikina Brata, Mokoshina Bragadas, Embalagados, 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 Ekriko, Braki, Gova, Rekadina, Bakru, the Bushina Baratis, Eli Brata, Kidena Moko, Super Baba Gadaras, Eblock Rigo, Vara, Kotina Baba Brata, Kutusupra, Eka Panda, Eka Panda. The hang about the hang about the supra, a block rook in the barata got the barata in the mountains, a vacuum scopra, hack and lag a dozen of rap. We go barana mandos, we go barana mandos, we go barana laga dos supra. Eh, so ba bena mandos, so ba ba gadina bara gadina mandos. Oh, we receive our trans. Eh, kli bra gadi go fera na mango rati go vela go dos supra. Eh, shu bra gadi go bra gadina bara na na mago dos supra. Eh, shu bra ti go bara ba gadina mandos supra. Eh, shu go bara fadina bara de. Eh, bla bra ti go bara na mago supra. Oh, so se bra na mago supra. Oh, shu bla bra ti go bira ba dos supra. Oh. Sala bragadina mando supra gidala gados. O ne mandos, o ne mandos, o ne mandos supra gadada supra. O she pa 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 prati gile frogotina supra. O prati ke bena mandos. Eli prati ke dos supra na mandos. Eki faraga dos.
name of the Lord. He deserves all our worship. Glory. 
shortly i want to say welcome to another edition of in christ gathering it's a pleasure to have you all here today praise the lord and for those joining online you're also welcome it's going to be a great time amen you know in my heart praying for this meeting one thing i sense is that god's word will bring solutions and clarity to us as the word of god is taught the power of God is demonstrated. Questions are answered, needs are met, bodies are healed, even as the word of God is taught. Praise the Lord. So let's stay expectant, amen, throughout the teaching, even as we flow with the Holy Ghost, amen. And, you know, it's a power meeting, amen. So God's power is going to be present to heal and to meet needs. Praise the Lord. Let's say a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise, all the glory. We thank you because it's in you we live, we move, and we have our being. We thank you because you have given us your son, Jesus Christ. And that has made all the difference in our lives. That's why we are all gathered here, to learn your word, to know you more. And we say thank you for this privilege. Thank you for the privilege to be called sons of God. Thank you for this very great privilege. And Lord, as we receive your word, my words, and not my words only, but the words of the Lord, and it comes with clarity and precision. And every heart understands the word as it's taught clearly in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So today's topic is um, peace and the power of God. Praise the Lord. It's not a very common topic even for me. So as I was praying, you know, asking the Lord what we would learn in this meeting, and I got this direction. I was myself surprised because I haven't thought 
squarely along these lines before, but you know, we trust that as God's word is um, taught to us, that it's, it clarifies things. Amen. Praise God. You know, I'll start by saying many times we hear a lot about, you know, righteousness, about joy, about health, about power. But many times we do not hear as much or hear as much about um, peace. Praise God. And Jesus himself talks quite some about peace. In fact, Paul would end almost all his epistles by saying grace and peace be unto you. Praise God. You know, if you would say grace, which we talk much about, but the peace part, you know, many times, or many of us have not gone on to learn more about, you know, what, what does that mean for us and how do we experience whatever Paul, you know, says so repeatedly. Praise God. And that's what we're going to learn today. Amen. It's, it's a lengthy teaching, so... I'll try my best to finish, but um, if we can't, we'll, we'll continue some other time. Praise God. So, um, let's open our Bibles to Isaiah chapter 9. We'll start from verse 5. It says, for every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. I'm using the King James Version. But these shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Now, that's a lot, so but let's go to the next verse. It says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, he calls this child, the, he says the government will be on his shoulder. That's one thing about this child he's talking about. Secondly, he says his name will be called Wonderful. Then he says Counselor. This same child will also be called the Mighty God. Hallelujah. He will be called the Everlasting Father. And he will also be called the Prince of Peace. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, next verse, it says, Of the increase of his government... And what? And peace again. There shall be no end. So his government is going to increase, and you know the establishments of his government will not end. It will not. It's not a. It's not a four-year tenure government. Amen. It's a government that would last forever. And then he says that. this not just his government would shall be no end or there shall be no end to there will also be no end to what to peace is both praise god you know many times we talk about the government side but peace is something we often neglect praise the lord so he says of his government and peace there shall be no end now, if you look at verse 6, he had talked about different things. He had talked about the government. He had talked about the names, uh, Prince of Peace, Mighty God. He now goes to the next verse to zero in into two of those things that he had talked about before. Every, are we together? Okay. So, he had mentioned government. He had mentioned Prince of Peace. He had mentioned more things. Then he comes down to verse 7 and talks about government again, right? Which is his rule or his kingdom. 
which Jesus did a lot of talking about. And then he comes to also talk about peace. And he says that this peace is endless. Praise God. Hallelujah. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will what? Will perform it. Praise God. So, it says that God has committed himself to also performing all that he has just said. So, God has committed himself to bring Jesus. He has committed that in the reign of Jesus, there will be a government that will be unending. In that same reign, there will also be a peace that will be unending. Praise God. Amen. So, would would um, look for the uh, these things so uh, that means if we are going to speak about all that jesus has come to do and we talk about his kingdom you know we use that word kingdom a lot we won't be completely talking about everything if we don't talk about peace and this peace is also an endless peace praise god so part of the things or in summary Part of the things that Jesus has provided for us. Because um, first, is the kingdom of God in Christ established? Yes or no? Right? Is he already come and, you know, and, and is called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace? Yes. So that means... Even this peace that was promised here has also been accomplished. Praise God. Amen. Let's go um, look into some more scriptures. Isaiah chapter 53. From verse 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Verse 5, it says, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Praise the Lord. So he says that the chastisement of our peace what's chastisement chastisement is punishment right to chastise someone and this is not chastisement is not you know it's a very strong word it means to brutally punish someone it, it, it's not just to caution it's not just to correct praise god so the chastisement for our peace so that means now if you look at all the other things he said here, he talked about he was wounded for our transgressions. I'm sure we already know what that means. It means that he took on our sin. He was bruised for our iniquities. But he didn't stop there. It means that everything that would have cost us peace, so to speak, he also took upon him. So every punishment everything that would have cost us restlessness he has taken upon himself praise the lord and talks about by his stripes we are healed praise god so from the two scriptures we've looked at so far i'm sure we can already see that peace or the peace of god is already come to us in christ because it was prophesied by the old testament or by the prophets of the old testament or in the scriptures praise god so the peace of god has been prophesied and has now been accomplished in christ jesus and we'll see that let's look at ezekiel chapter 37 verse 26 it says moreover i'll make a covenant of peace with them it shall be an everlasting covenant with them 
and i would i will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them for how long forevermore so the covenant that he would make with us ezekiel calls it what the covenant of peace and was speaking concerning the new covenant that he would make in christ praise the lord and that covenant of peace he says that it is an everlasting covenant does it sound like what we saw in isaiah says the peace is what endless ezekiel says it is everlasting praise the lord so now and this peace is you know just to because when you hear peace most of us think of first of a feeling and we'll get to that i feel peace or you go to if you go on vacation and you go to a, a very serene environment and you say ah this environment is so peaceful praise god <laughs> so there's that side of peace and we'll talk about that side but the foundation of peace is not rooted in an emotion or a feeling or in an atmosphere praise god it is rooted in the very covenant that we have in christ praise god i will look at later when in galatians 5 paul was listing out what we call the fruit of the spirit and he includes the same peace praise god so that means and the fruit of the spirit is basically the characteristics that the holy spirit in us um, would help our spirits to express it's not the holy spirit that bears the fruit praise god the holy spirit already has those characters or characteristics and he expresses it through a human reborn spirit so it's a reborn spirit that would now bear those fruits you know and we'll see it in our attitude and our actions and our lives praise the lord so let's go on i'm taking time to establish the foundation because we still have a lot to talk about let's look at the new testament let's look at john john 14 verse 25 Or let's start from verse 23. John 14, 23. It says, Jesus answered and said unto them, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and will come unto him, and will and make a abode with him. Verse 24. He that loveth me, not he that loveth me not keepeth not my sins and the word which ye hear is not mine but the father's which sent me verse 25 these things i write unto as have i spoken unto you being yet present with you verse 26 he now says but the comforter which is the holy ghost whom the father will send in my name he shall teach you all things. We've seen what all things here is in, I think, one of our meetings. And bring all things to your remembrance. We've seen what all things is bringing to our remembrance as well. Whatsoever I have said unto you. So, he's bringing the things Jesus has said unto the twelve to their remembrance. And by extension to our remembrance. And he's also bringing... Um, it's also teaching us all things what things the things concerning christ amen now verse 27 he now says peace i live with you my peace i give unto you not as the word giveth give i unto you let your, not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid ye have ye ye have heard how I, I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you loved me, you would rejoice, because I said I go unto my father, for my father is greater than I. Let's stop there. Praise God. So in verse 27, it says, Peace I live with you. Praise God. He lives by extension to us, and he gives peace unto us. 
and is not as the world gives but he gives as he his own peace and you know this is not different from the peace that we saw in the prophets and the scriptures the prophets talked about this peace um, like we saw as i said it's a gov is the government and peace will be no end he calls jesus the prince of peace um you know he says he has taken the chastisement for our peace same as i and then ezekiel now crowns it by saying that the covenant would receive is the covenant of peace praise god now so when you hear peace what comes to mind two things um one you hear something peace talks about reconciliation right if two people are not in talking terms or they are fighting and you go and settle them you know it will be right to call you a peacemaker right because you have settled a feud between two people and you have made sure that they reconcile so one of the things or one of two major things that peace means to us is that we are reconciled with god amen i will see that you know as we go on secondly is that peace would always chase away fear praise god it will chase away fear it will chase away worry amen you know i used to have some i used to hear back then in school you tell someone take care like after you finish talking you say take care and the person will say something like i'm not taking care the bible says take uh, <laughs> you know and i used to just laugh if you really were not taking care you won't have to tell me no i won't take care <laughs> it's because there's care you're trying to fight the care maybe that's a good step to fighting the care but that doesn't really solve the care problem or the worry and threats and fear and all the other things that we experience because we're in this world so like i was saying so the second thing that you know when we talk about peace that comes to mind is that you know a state that would that were totally at rest totally you know um maybe surrendered if you would say such that we are not afraid such that we are not even um, worried about anything because we are at peace praise god hallelujah so the, I'm, I'm the second one i i'm trying to paint the picture but i hope my words communicate it clearly praise god but the first one i'm sure you get it i hope you get the second one as well so let's go on so that's what uh comes to mind when we talk about peace praise god i'm sure there are other things that would come to mind so for example you know if you say somebody is peaceful in our local parlance when you say ah, this person is a peaceful person it may not be that the person is not does not keep malice it may just be that the person is quiet we usually call quiet people peaceful people ah that person is just peaceful until you see the person changing for another <laughs> you realize that ah, this peace is not really peace in. praise god yeah. so you know but <laughs> it's not that one is fake peace praise god <laughs> it's not that kind of peace that is just in a look but it's not in the heart praise the lord so the peace we are talking about is both the fact that we've been reconciled with god and in that reconciliation we rest completely in that such that we have no care and no worry praise god so i said all this to say what jesus was saying in verse 26 sorry in verse 27 so after he talks about peace he now says i will leave this peace with you so that what so that your heart will not be troubled and so that you will not be afraid amen in the natural there are many things to be afraid of for example you know if you live in nigeria <laughs> you don't need to pray for 
for prayer points just look around amen i remember i was talking to a friend you know we're talking about the fact that he met somebody i think in the in the u.s that was trying to solve a problem for people not knowing their shoe size and he was just thinking that ah, of all the problems in the world to solve is that people don't know their shoe size they want to use technology to solve he said he just that he felt like telling the guy that you know i'll just bring you to lagos just come to the airport open your eyes you'll be seeing plenty <laughs> You see serious problems <laughs> that you want to solve. Praise God. You know, I said that say that. If you look at our world today, particularly if you live, you know, for those of us that all live here together, there are a lot of things to be worried about. The economy. In fact, the interesting thing is not just in Nigeria. I hear people in the UK complaining about the economy. People in the U.S. are complaining about the economy. So it's, globally, almost everybody is complaining about the economy. So that's something that you know we we may want to care about or worry about. You know, there is maybe the security situation in the country, and you know, security issues is not just in Nigeria alone. Praise God for people that jackpa because we are not secure. The shooting rates in the U.S public school shootings and random shootings they are skyrocketing every day praise god so there's problem everywhere amen and if you go to those places there are things that some of them are scared of there are some neighborhoods that some people live in and you know they don't want to come out at night so there are enough things in the environment i'm not trying to you know glorify those things but there are enough things in the environment that can make you worried, that can make you afraid. But God says that he has given us peace in Christ, and Jesus specifically says that this peace, he has left it with us. And as he has left it with us, we don't need to be afraid, and we don't need to worry. Praise God. Amen. And this peace, we'll see later, it will keep our hearts. It will keep our hearts stayed on God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's go on. Uh, Romans 14, verse 16. If you're there, you can read for me. Let me, let me outsource the reading to someone this time. Next verse. Okay. I think. Praise God. So it says, for the kingdom of God, and you know the context here is Paul was talking about people who are served food that were offered to idols or you know prepared maybe an unbeliever is celebrating a non-christian festival and they are serving food and he was just talking about the conduct of a believer how they were not affected by those things and all of that but that's not the focus the focus is verse 17 he says the kingdom of god is not meat and drink so don't estimate meat and drink above you know what the word says he now says but the kingdom of god is what is righteousness is peace and joy in the holy ghost you know we sing one song righteousness peace and joy in the holy ghost that okay thank you so righteousness peace and joy and i i know we've heard a lot about righteousness even here we had the meeting dedicated talk to talking about righteousness I'm sure we hear a lot about joy every time. We hear rejoice. You know, Paul uses that word a lot. But you see, not just righteousness and joy is in the Holy Ghost. We also have peace in the Holy Ghost. And that's why in the previous uh, scripture we looked at, after Jesus 
had just finished speaking to um, his disciples about the coming of the Holy Spirit, saying that he would cause them to remember things to come and all of that. He next thing he tells them is that I leave peace with you. Praise God. So when he says he leaves it with them, how will he leave it? Is by what? Is by who? Is by the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's not like he carried peace and wrapped it up in a container and said, "Okay, I'm leaving three models of peace." And just take it. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely not what he did so in giving peace to us that peace is in the spirit that he had just talked about so the peace that we have is in the holy ghost so that means the holy ghost does not just dwell in us to reveal things to us or to be our comforter and guide he also dwells in us to ensure that what jesus has left with us is present indeed with us so that means in the holy ghost is the peace of god and where's the holy ghost right now in us praise god so we have peace in the holy ghost praise god now let's uh try and pick up speed a bit so it says uh, we, we this peace um, I wrote something down here. I said that this peace was promised by the prophets, then by Jesus, and now confirmed by Paul that indeed we have the peace of God dwelling in us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Second Corinthians 13 verse 11. It says, Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect be of good comfort be of one mind live in peace and the god of love and peace shall be with you praise god so i, I just want to point something here he says be of good comfort live in you know peace but he calls god the god of what of love and of peace praise god that means it's not a godly character to be worried praise god is not a godly character to take care and to allow that care dominate our hearts maybe uh you have a a friend that is traveling let's say the person is traveling by road in nigeria and are staying up all night it takes every five five minutes have you gotten there nothing wrong in texting but you know you are worried and you are scared that maybe something you've heard stories or oh, how many of us have entered public transports particularly you know interstates in nigeria and the person that wants to lead prayers the first thing he says is every blood sucking demon on the highway <laughs> praise god <laughs> you know they already portray blood in fact there was one i entered said the blood eaters and the, there was it was very graphic like statement I was just like, so is it like this guy saw a vision of blood, like they were waiting, looking for who to eat? Praise God. And all that kind of praying is just, God, in fact, it doesn't go above the ceiling of the boss. Amen. Because it's just fear. You're just talking fear to God. And God doesn't answer fear. He answers prayers in faith. Praise God. So, uh, praise God so peace that we have in god guarantees us that in the midst of chaos in the midst of adverse circumstances we can stay confident and we can stay calm praise god hallelujah amen so um what does i i have a question here that i would answer of course it says what does this peace that we have look like you know we've been talking some about peace what does it look like how will i know if i'm walking in peace or not praise god so we'll, we'll see a bit about what that peace looks like it, it's a state in our spirit that is already present in the spirit of a believer 
So you know you you can't come to meet me that I pray for me to give you peace. Where will I get it from? It's already in you. Amen. We've seen that God is called the God of love and peace. Uh, we've seen that in the prophecy concerning Christ, he says he is the Prince of Peace. He says that his peace is endless. Praise God. We've seen that the covenant that we have is one of peace. And we'll see that also in the epistles. So all this talks about the fact that we have peace. Then Jesus crowns it all by telling us he has left his peace with us. Amen. So we cannot now be praying to God to give us peace. He will ask you, how do I give it? Because you have it. Amen. You have peace already. So God is not going to, you know, come and give you peace. You may not experience peace in your experience, just like righteousness and joy. Right? We saw that righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. We have righteousness. Second Corinthians 5, verse 21. Um, let's look at that quickly. It says that for he had made him sin, he had made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him? So God had made Christ to become sin for us so that we become the righteousness of God in Christ. So we have righteousness. Have all your actions in the past two years been actions that you tag righteousness to i'm not sure right so the fact that that has happened in your experience does that negate the scripture that we are the righteousness of god no it doesn't praise god we are indeed the righteousness of god in our daily life in our learning of god's word it's just like a newborn believer you know, you preach the gospel to the person, he gets saved. He now has righteousness. But let's say he used to hang around with people who commit burglary, who go into who break into people's houses and steal. You know that if he doesn't leave that environment, he will likely keep stealing with those people. So what discipleship will do is that you first of all start sharing God's word with him. Hopefully he's listening because there are some newborn believers too a friend of mine is probably watching us that was telling me a story of a brother that he had gotten saved he was following up you know trying to disciple and then he went to invite the brother to come for church so the brother said i've not had my bath said ah, no problem i'll wait for you to have your bath so okay so he saw the brother carry buckets and carry it inside the bedroom 10 minutes, it has not come out. 15 minutes, it has not come out. One hour, it has not come out. This is what I turn out beating. So he knocks. Ah, bro, what's going on now? Ah, no sound. Ah, ah. He opens the door. No human being, only bucket. Praise God. <laughs> the guy had scaled the window. <laughs> praise god <laughs> so god has different kinds of children <laughs> praise, that's why when i hear some people say as a christian you can marry any believer ah it's not every believer that the yeah, head is correct too amen but anyway so i, I said that to say so that that brother that did that it, it, it doesn't mean the brother that this scripture is not true concerning him He's still the righteousness of God in Christ. What does he need? He needs to be taught. So as he learns God's word, as he grows in the light of God's word, what will happen? He will begin to see that, oh, indeed, just like verse 17 says, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. There's the ability in his spirit for him to live that way so he would start exhibiting that lifestyle. Praise God. That's the lifestyle of a believer. And that's how spiritual growth happens. Amen. So, uh, for example, we have joy in the Holy Ghost. But you know there are some believers that if you ever see them smile, 
you'll be wondering if there's a problem. You know, their face is like you know concrete. They are always squeezing their face, and you know, squeezing your face is not spirituality. Amen. Praise God. So, but does that mean they don't have joy? They do have joy. Should they show it some more so that we can see it? They should. Praise God. We should all show some more joy in our daily experience. Praise the Lord. So, same way we have the peace of God. And the peace of God is now in our spirits. And we can now exhibit that peace every day of our lives. Praise the Lord. So, um, like I've said, just like every other provision we have in Christ, we have peace in Christ in our spirits. Amen. Let's look at um, a few more scriptures. Let's look at Galatians chapter 5. Galatians 5. From verse 22. It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such, there is no law. Amen. So, the same way that the believer should show fruit of love, should show fruit of joy, of patience, of gentleness, of goodness, of faith, meekness, temperance, should also show the fruit of peace. So, that means when a believer is in worry, is taking the care, is in fear, is not acting like a believer. Because the believer has peace with God and has peace in Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we ought to exhibit peace. But you know, it becomes a burden when you say, how do I stop myself from worrying? And we'll look at that. How do I stop myself from taking the care? We'll see that as we go on. So that we don't just say, walk in peace. And just go, you know, ah, this peace... Okay, I start singing songs. Maybe that will bring the peace. But we'll, we'll see how we can actually walk in this sense. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, I just wrote something down here. We look at, if we see Ephesians 2, Ephesians 2, verse 13, it says, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace who had made both one and broken down the middle wall of partition between us. So, God, or Christ rather, is now our peace because he has broken down the middle wall of partition that was between us. So, this is speaking of uh, two things, both the partition that was between the Jew and the Gentile, you know, because the Jew had the old covenant, the Gentile didn't have any covenant. And also the partition that was between man, generally, and God. Praise God. So that has been broken and Christ has now become our peace. Praise the Lord. And this is what, you know, Ezekiel spoke about, but is now fulfilled in Christ and is also taught in the epistles. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, the title of this meeting is Peace and the Power of God. So we've been talking a lot about peace. Where does power of God come into the conversation? Right? And is there a connection between peace and the power of God? So we would see that. And I would love us to pay you know, very careful attention as we look into that. Let's go to James 5. Or actually, let's go to James 5. Yeah. Um, from verse 15 well, let's let's just go straight to 16 are we there it says confess your faults or oh, will someone read for me Yes.
Thank you. Praise God. So James is talking about, you know, first talks for about confess your faults, pray for one another that ye may be healed. So he now goes on. He had talked about, you know, you can pray for one another that you be healed, right? He now says a bit about prayer. So he now says that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. Who is a righteous man? Do I have righteous people here? So he's talking about us, right? It says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And then he goes on to use Elijah as an example of that righteous man. I want to read this in the Amplified. Um, Amplified. I'm using the Amplified Classic. It says, Confess to one another, therefore, your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins. And pray also for one another that ye may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. The earnest, heart, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man. So he calls um, earnest, not just earnest. He says earnest is heartfelt and is also continued, right? Prayer of a righteous man. He says that it does what? It makes tremendous power available. So, a righteous man prays. What does that prayer do? It makes tremendous power available. It says that that power, the Amplified, is what? Dynamic in its working. Sorry, I'm assuming you all have Amplified. So, it says the tremendous power that is made available through prayer is dynamic in his working so let me explain that so when he says prayer makes tremendous power available he's not saying that prayer gives you power amen he's also not saying that you use prayer to call down power no he's saying that prayer makes power available and that power that's available, as the Amplified helps us to see, is dynamic in its working. So let me explain this from natural context. We have electrical power that, the, that is coming from the national grid, right? That's coming from the power stations. Now, we, we all live in places where we now have transformers. Is that correct? Those transformers, what does it do? It steps down the power so that, because if you receive the power, the way it's coming from the power station, it will blow up everything you have in your house, <laughs> right? So, so that it doesn't do that, it steps down the power and then distributes it to you in a way that you can use it. So the power came from one source, came to the transformer, and then it's coming into your house. Now, that power comes to your house it powers on the bulbs. You have light. Are we together? We know this so I'm, I'm using what we know to explain. So we have light. That same power, you can use it to charge your phone. Is that correct? The same is not a different power. The same power, you can use it to turn on the television. You can use it to power your fridge or freezers. You can uh, use it to fry stuff if you have a fryer. You can use it to cook if you use an electric cooker. So this power, is it dynamic in its working? This electrical power is dynamic, right? Why is it dynamic? Because you can use it for so many things. But is it the same power? Is it the same power that you used in your bedroom to turn on the AC? that you use to turn on the heater in the bathroom is the same power. So that means the same power can produce cold, the same power can produce heat, but it's the same power. So what does that say about that power? It is dynamic in when it's working. So who chooses how the power works? 
is it any ROC? Is it the power station? Is it your electrician? Is you. So by the time you connect this speaker to power, what has happened? I speak and you hear from the speakers, right? So you determine how the power is used. No other person does. If you choose to have power in your house now, you turn off all the lights, you turn off all the switches, all the sockets, and nothing is in use. Is there still power? There's still power. For example, I woke up this morning and the lights were off. So I was wondering if there was power. Then I went to turn on the lights. And then, oh, there's power. But was there always power? How did I become aware of the power when I switched it on? Right? Praise God. Now let's go back to the Bible. We've talked enough about electricity. <laughs> okay. So, now, we have, you know, the scripture we read, it says that the NS heartfelt prayer of righteous man makes tremendous power available. Now, it's not making power available that does not already exist. Let's look at Acts, Acts 1. I'm sure we're thinking, how is this connected to peace? No worry, we'll soon find out. Amen. Acts 1 verse 8. It says that ye shall receive what? Power. After the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses both unto me, uh, unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth says that when the holy ghost comes upon you what happens to you you receive what what's the first thing you receive power so when um in the in acts 2 the holy ghost as you know the writer of the book of acts luke describes it says the holy ghost fell on them right and they began to speak with other tongues. They actually, them speaking in other tongues, was that the power? The tongues they spoke in. Was that the power that Jesus spoke about? No, that's not the power. Remember the demonstration. You can use the same power to power a speaker. You can use the same power to power a bulldozer. Right? You can plug it. Or Now we even have electric cars. So you can power the car. Power the batteries of the car. So the car starts. Right? And that car can crush. Let's say it's a bulldozer. It's a very large car or tractor. It can crush a whole building down. Praise God. Now. The power that's in the battery, in fact, the power in the battery of that bulldozer that can fall down a whole building, there's probably more power in this socket than in that bulldozer, we, right? Because it's re residual power that's in the battery. This one is life. If you un remove all these things and touch it, you will feel it powerfully. <laughs> Praise God. So, but why are we just using this one to plug speakers and to charge our phones? Who chose to do that? Us. Meanwhile, the one that is stored power that was taken from somewhere else, they now stored it in a battery. They are now using it to take down, they can use it to take down this whole building. But yet, there's even more powerful power that we just use for elementary things. Praise God. So, that means with the same power, you can use that power to speak with tongues. It's the same power that you receive from Jesus. With the same power, you can use that power 
to do what he says in Acts um, in Mark 15 16 or 16 15 rather can use the same power you know go into all the world heal the sick cast out demons you know all those things that Jesus says in Matthew 10 and in Mark 16 you can use the same power to do that it's the same power you can choose the same power to receive healing in your own body it's the same power you can use the same power to cure your worries and your fears is the same power are we together is the same power so the same power of god works in dynamic ways and just like the electrical power that you choose how that power will work the power of god who chooses how it will work us now james now gives us an insight that we can choose how that power is made available through prayer praise god so when we pray where's the power coming from from heaven no it's coming from within us from our spirit because we are already endued with power as jesus had you know said to us so we pray what happens that power comes from within us and is made available to do work who determines what the power will do us amen you know you can use the same power to iron your clothes right you can also use the same power to wash your clothes and you know when you wash your clothes it gets squeezed <laughs> praise god in the washing machine right so the washing machine would wash the clothes squeeze the clothes you put use the same power put it spin it dry the clothes right you you take the same very power and iron the clothes for it to be straightened it wasn't a different power you just chose how you wanted to use that power praise the lord now i'm saying this so like you know when we it can be clearer so the power of god is not going to come from heaven so when we say god let your power fall it's not really going to fall where is it going to fall from praise god like where, where how do we want it to fall to fall in our heads no the power is within us jesus says you receive power after the holy ghost comes upon you and the holy ghost is in us it's upon us so we have that power now praise the lord so we have the power we have the power so when we pray we stir up that power so that's why you hear some people say i paid the sacrifice and locked myself for x number of days and prayed and i now became powerful that story is not completely correct did he pray yes he did did he experience more power yes he did did he become more powerful no he didn't praise god so what did the prayer do the prayer made all the power that was already within him more expressive praise the lord so as we pray there is now an increase in the intensity of power that is made available and how does that really happen it happens because prayer makes you more spiritually conscious so because you are more spiritually conscious in the place of prayer you are now more conscious of power praise god so there's more consciousness of the power because that power is spiritual prayer you're just speaking you just finished speaking to a spirit being so you are more spiritual or you are more your mind your natural mind is more in tune with the spiritual than to the natural and so the more you do that the more your mind is more spiritual the more you are more conscious of the power that you have and the more consciousness of that power is the more expression or the more availability of that power to do work which work whatever work you want it to do amen praise the lord so prayer is equal to the availability of the power that already resides in us 
so if you pray more particularly praying in other talks and we'll talk more on that later but i'll just touch on it a bit now when we pray in other tongues we are praying in the spirit i pray in the language of the spirit you know among all the nine gifts of the spirit every other thing in that list apart from tongues and interpretation was seen in the either in the old testament or in the four gospels you know that right every other thing should we call it words of knowledge did uh, elijah no working words of knowledge he did right he did praise god uh -huh. he told um he walked in word of wisdom he told ahab or he told the people that it will not rain and it didn't rain in fact all the prophets what happened what did we read we read them prophesying when we read Isaiah, we read ezekiel we're reading people actively prophesying praise god so prophecy that we have as listed among the gifts of the spirit was expressed in the old testament we mentioned more healing we saw people get healed in the four gospels jesus got people healed elijah got a woman's child raised from the dead same thing with elisha so we saw the expressions of the power of god in healing Working of miracles, uh, there were so many. In fact, Joshua had to tell the son to stand still, or we now say is, uh, you know, however we say it scientifically now. But we see different expressions of power in the Old Testament. But there's one we never saw. We never saw people speak with other tongues. We didn't see it. So there's something about that gift that we need to pay attention to that has a lot to do with the power of God. Praise the Lord. So if we will spend much time in other tongues, what if we would uncover more of the power that's already available to us? Praise the Lord. And we'll see that in scripture. Amen. I'm tempted to, to go into that already. Let's just look at it briefly. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 27. Hallelujah. You know, we've, we've talked more on the earlier verses of this um, particular chapter in our previous meetings. But we haven't really looked at it. And you know, I, you know, I had said in the very first meeting we had that um, chapter, uh, verses 4, 5, and 6 is like the table of contents, right? That it's that what you will find in this chapter, you will find gifts, you will find administrations, and you will find operations. But we never really went got in got into the administrations and operations. Praise God. So verse 27, are we there? It says, We are the body of Christ and members in particular. But God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondary prophets thirdly teachers after that miracles then gifts of healings helps governments diversities of tongues praise the lord so it says that he has set in the church apostles he has set in the church he has set teachers he has set miracles so why does he go into the other the other things look like roles right an like you can call a person an apostle i can say solomon is an apostle i can say solomon is a prophet i can say solomon is a teacher but can i say solomon is a miracle solomon is a gift of healing solomon is a help solomon is a government solomon is a diversity of tongues. you know it, it will be weird right praise god so you <laughs> I don't think we have the the time to look at this but i would i'll run through it praise the lord amen so what's he really talking about here is he talking about ministry um, um offices alone or administrations no he's talking about administrations and operations amen praise god so 
he says that the um, apostle, the prophet, and you know when he says first, secondly, thirdly, you know, that it's not like the, the number one level rank is apostle, then the junior brother is prophet, then you now have teacher, then you now have miracles. No, that's not what Paul is saying. Actually, what he's saying is in the church, you know, he's talking about in verse 27, it says, Now we are the body of Christ and members in particular. How did we have the ministry offices appear in the church? It was first they were apostles, the 12, right? Then, if you look at Acts 13, you see apostles, prophets, and teachers. That was the next things that we saw. Or those were the next things that we saw. Then, we now saw miracles, healings, helps, governments, and diversity of top. Now, he's not saying all these are also offices in a sense. He is talking about the office and the operation of the office. Praise God. Now, if you look at I didn't plan to explain this, but I'll just quickly run through it. If you look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, it says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and what? And teachers, right? So what two offices are missing in the one we just read? I need feedback. What two? No, teachers is there. Evangelists and pastors, right? Okay. Praise God. So he's talking here. So that means if we were to look at this list that we have here, we may want to say that um, there's a chance that the list here is not complete. Is that... Is, like it's not the total list that we saw in it's not the complete list that we saw in Ephesians 4 right okay but really I, that may not really be the case because um, when it says gifts miracles and then gifts of healings a good way to look at this I'm putting it that way because it's not finite right but a good way to look at this would be to say that miracles and gifts of healings those are two um, of the gifts that are highly in operation in the ministry of who the evangelists right the evangelists how you know some if somebody say i'm an evangelist and he goes remember tl osborne he went to india to preach he got to india Preach, 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 preach. They were coming in their... <laughs> yeah, that's the word, trickles. And, you know, <laughs> it, you know, they said, ah, Jesus, you know, we have many gods here. Jesus is just one of them. What's the difference between him and the others? The others don't do anything for us. We just pray to them. I just believe. So we had him there. So he said, I'm not doing this thing again. So he went back to America and he encountered the ministry of another man of God who had been working so much in the supernatural and spent some time with him and then understood from the gospels that the ministry of the of the of the gospel should be demonstrated by the power of God. So he went back and we had, you know, that's one of the men in the last 100 years that you would have seen the most miracles in their meetings from he's, he's had so many miracles in demonstration you know i remember one he wasn't even the one that ministered he was the minister and right in the meeting he didn't lay hand i think it was either his daughter or his wife that was going around the condition and there was a man who was born with eye sockets without bulb that eyeballs it, it was just a so no sorry i'm missing the story he was born without eyes 
there was nothing there so they put a plastic um, eyeball inside to look like an eye but the other eye worked in that meeting he could see from the plastic eye praise god and i've, I've watched videos of the man himself demonstrate it on tv on live television where he would take out the ball he would close the other eye i've forgotten his name now but you, you can research it he would close the other eye and he will read from the empty hole <laughs> praise god that's a miracle amen and that's some evangelistic ministry praise the lord so the ministry of the evangelist is characterized by the operation of miracles and healings and we said in the last meeting actually that operations are how the gifts work in the ministries right praise god so operations will be what you would probably call a pattern or something that is seen a lot in the ministries so we see that as the operation we see helps and government which is you know more around the local church praise god and the pastor is not mentioned here and the pastor is the one who administers helps and governments praise god but the last one that's the one that is a little now interesting it calls the diversities of tongues praise the lord calls it diversities of tongues so these um these tongues praise the lord these tongues you know it says um, there's a word the word diverse is the word genus it means kindred it means a kind of people an offspring of people praise god so it's a kindred tongue amen but that tongue um we can have different ways expressed amen so we have tongue that is for edification we have tongue that can be interpreted because in the next verses he talks about interpretation of tongues and we have um, two other ones that i will not go into praise god so um let me mention we have tongues that uh we see in acts 2 we don't see much of that that's why i'm not going to explain much of it because it's not so present in you know in the epistles but we see it in acts 2 where people spoke with tongues and people could hear their own language some people said they gave tongues and interpretation it wasn't written there praise god but we from what we see that's what happened don't say uh, they were all um, israelites who were living in different parts of the world but they said they could hear themselves in their own tongue and that word is dialect so even within israel um, the different tribes actually had different it's just like um, um, all of us are from uh, let's say houses but within houses there are different dialects so or yorubas i think i'm more familiar with that one so if you hear somebody speaking say ah, this man is speaking on do yoruba and this one is speaking um Ibadan Yoruba or Oshun Yoruba. You know, we say things like that, right? Because they sound different. And that's why they ask are all these men not Galileans? Why are they speaking in our own tongue? So they're definitely speaking in the language that was different from what they expected them to speak. I don't think we need to see that now. Praise God. Because we're almost <laughs> off with the first session. So I'm just saying that to explain. You can read up on it later. So we see that tongue in that expression and we had we've had that experience you know in the azusa street revival when many people left azusa and they went from the u.s to different parts of the world and they would speak with tongues and they would the people there would understand what they were saying so should i now go to um and i say tomorrow now that i want to go to one um i don't speak Hausa, so i'll go to an Hausa guy maybe a vendor that I work with, I say, ah, I just start speaking in tongues so I can understand. You know, that would be foolishness. Praise God. These were supernatural, divine operations of God. So that's why I don't touch much on them. 
and there's also tongues that is supernatural groanings where you know the holy ghost you're praying in tongues but you're not it's not just tongues for edification or you're praying a prayer request and the holy ghost just takes your tongue and you groan and it's not praise god and you groan and supplicate so uh, that happens um, such that you know when you grow new you, you are basically making life and death decisions in the place of prayer but that's also supernatural that's not something say i want to grow now I, I, I know i've been in some circles where they say let's grow all of them start doing like dog woo, 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 woo. i'm like what's going on praise god that's definitely not it that this is supernatural and i've had that in the place of prayer i'm just praying in the spirit and then I just sense a heavy body and I just start praying so passionately, so passionately. And sometimes I can be you can be at it for three hours until it eases off. So sometimes if you if you know or you pay attention to things of spirit, the Lord will tell you what you are just settled in the place of prayer. So there's that, and that's also more of a supernatural experience. But there's tongues and interpretation. This one we can explain it a lot more amen and so i would rather dwell on those so he says um, he calls he says diversities of tongues and this is the eighth operation of the um, administrations of the spirit praise god so this eighth operation called diversities of tongues why is it listed among all the other administrations and operations is listed because this particular operation actually does equip every other one when you speak with tongue and that's why after this Paul talks about love because the gifts of the spirit should work should, operate, should be operated in love in chapter 14 he dedicates the whole chapter to talk about tongues he didn't dedicate a whole chapter to talk about healing he didn't dedicate the whole chapter to talk about word of knowledge Praise God. He dedicated it to talk about tongues. Because that's one very powerful gift. Also an operation. It, and in some people, it's more than just the gift. Particularly tongues with interpretation. Some people, it's, it's a stronger operation. Particularly in how they flow in their ministry. And we, we've seen that in present day. In like a brother and sister goodwin how they would flow in tongues and adaptation and it was much more than just you know the average believer walking in tongues and adaptation is that they had exercised themselves and you know the lord had made it more of an operation in their ministries praise god so there's also that praise the lord yeah so i i came here to say that tongues is a very powerful gift amen there's more but i this is a side journey as, and it's taking a lot of time so i would rather just round it up let's just look at first corinthians 14 verse 2 quickly i'll still come back to talk about tongues a little um like i said when i started if we can't finish what we have here we would definitely come back another time it says, verse 2, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, how be it in the spirit he speaks mysteries. So when you speak in tongues, you speak to who? To God. Not to man. You speak to God. And it says, man may not understand, because you communicate mysteries. And last meeting we saw that, you know, as you speak mysteries to God, God brings those mysteries that you've spoken as revelation to you and you can receive that in your mind praise the lord and you know he goes on let's look at verse um, verse 14 it says for if i pray in an unknown tongue my understanding is what unfruitful so when we pray in tongues our understanding is unfruitful so it's not we don't pray with our understanding Verse 15 says, what is it then? I will pray with the Spirit. Praise the Lord. So when we pray with tongues, we are praying from our recreated spirit. Amen. 
there's nothing that we do like that that is a direct source of outflow from our spirit and that's why if we experience much more of god's power it will be good we pray pray more in tongues amen amen we'll come back to this a bit but let's let's leave the side journey and get back on track james 5 amen james 5 i have i think five minutes verse 16 so um back to james so he says that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man makes tremendous power available dynamic in its working in verse 17 he says that he now gives the example of how that power has worked before now let's pay attention to verse 17 he says elijah it was a man of like passions like we are so he was a normal guy he was a random guy like you are a normal believer you have challenges in life he had challenges at some point he ran from jezebel <laughs> praise god did you guys ever read how jezebel died some two guards they saw i think it was jehu coming and because jehu had killed some other was it jehu I think, I'm, I'm not sure now but they saw someone coming that was against the household of Ahab and that person had killed the king already or so so to do him a favor and to be in their good books Jezebel was just standing he just tripped her over from the stair from up and she just fell like it, it was so simple <laughs> It's not like they had to tie her to something and they fasted for 10 days for her to be able to die, right? She was just thrown and she died. Like, she was, I'm sure she was not as strong as the, how many, is it 400 prophets of bad that Elijah carried and slaughtered? But yes, Elijah was running and went to hide inside a cave for her. So, he was a normal guy, praise God. It was a normal man and that's what james says is, was like passions as we are but see what he says he says that he prayed earnestly that it might not rain and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months and then he prayed again and heaven gave rain and the earth brought forth her fruit so an example of someone who used prayer to demonstrate power is Elijah. He prayed, the earth gave forth rain. He came again, the same him. He was so sure that in a place of prayer, he would make power available. So he went again and prayed. And what happened? Power was available. He used that power to stop the rain. The same Elijah. Elijah knew how to use power in the Old Testament. One of those who really knew how to use power. He had mastered the act of using the power of God that men came to arrest him. 50 soldiers and a captain. The first one came. He said, if I be a man of God, let fire come down. Pew! All of them burnt to ashes. The next ones came. They saw ashes. They did not say, ah, bro, oh boy, are you sure we should go on this message? They came again. If I be a man of The same thing. The third one, a very wise man. The captain came. Who am I? He called him my lord. <laughs> Please. I don't, don't let me perish. The king just wants to see you. There's no problem at all. Just follow me. <laughs> and that's how he followed him. So that one was smart enough not to come and give Elijah an order. Um, Elijah, the same Elijah, used that same power to raise someone from the dead. The same Elijah used the same power to multiply... Um, food for the widow so he saw god's power as something that you could use to do different things and he used it praise god he didn't see that like some of us see god's power is just for prosperity or god's power is just for healing or god's power is just for salvation and that's why we have so many sects today elijah's god's power is for anything amen <laughs> and he used it for anything was he right to have killed those people 
I don't think so. Even Jesus says that uh, when the two Zebedee brothers they said, Can we send down fire so that we burn these people like Elijah? He said, Ah ah, no, no. You don't know of what spirit you are of. So the spirit we are of is the one that is of love. It's not as though Elijah did not have that word. Though. Elijah just did not pay attention to it. It was fire for fire. Praise God. So let's also, the moral of that story is also for us not to do fire for fire. Hallelujah. So back to back in context. So it says that Elijah prayed and rain fell. So just like what James had said in the previous verse, Elijah employed prayer. And in employing prayer, he made enough power available to stop a whole country from receiving rain for three and a half years. That was what he could use power to do. So James is showing us the extent of if we choose to deploy prayer as a tool to make power more available, we can do it so the point that we can stop a natural occurrence from even occurring. Rain is natural, right? There's raining season, there's dry like the unnatural thing is for Nedor to be rain. And he made it that way. And then until he came again to pray and said, may it rain now, it still didn't rain. So he used prayer as a tool again because he had already set a law in motion. No rain. You know, if Elijah didn't come back to pray, five years, no rain. Ten years, no rain. Till If he died, <laughs> and there was no other prophet like him, or more, <laughs> there will be rain though. <laughs> Maybe they'll be doing prayer chain for rain. <laughs> Praise God. But he came again because he was so confident about power. And he was so confident that prayer was a tool to release that power. So he did pray again and it rained again. Praise God. Now there's a lesson for us there about peace. And we'll learn that in the second session. Let me stop here. Praise the Lord. Amen. Have we been blessed so far? Yeah. Have we learned something? Praise God. So let's we'll come back in ten minutes and then um, we'll continue the study. Praise the Lord.